Hello Abnormal Family. I thought I would do another video since I had time today to do another drop. Uh, don't forget if you'd like to support Hunter Coming Home guys, we're getting so close to you all seeing some action. Uh, you can support him by the links in the description. I grew up in a rural community in this, I believe this is right, Squintina area of Alaska. A place that doesn't often appear on maps. It's only claim to fame as being a place the Iditarod passes on the way to Nome. It isn't a town or even a village, but a scattered community of homesteads. Apocalyptic preppers, lodge operations, and wealthy southerners with summer retreats all spread for miles up and down the river. It tends not to be a very frightening place, though it can be dangerous. Whether hostile wildlife or smash and grab criminals, if you know how to handle it with a rifle, there's nothing to be afraid of. Yet as long as I've lived out there, I have had an uncanny fear of being out in the woods alone. My family has a homestead nearby a large marsh. Ever since I was a child, I could see that expanse of grass and water outside my window. It would be mesmerizingly beautiful watching the wind ripple through that sea of grass. But at the same time, there was always something off-putting or eerie about it, especially when night came. Alaska is known as the place of the midnight sun during the summer. It never really gets dark. Unlike winter, instead of everything gets suspended in a dark out dusk until morning breaks. The sun falls just enough below the horizon that the sky grays and all the colors become muted with less definition. But there's still enough light to see everything, to make out shapes, the perfect conditions to make you think you're seeing things. I'd be looking out my window, watching the mist roll over the now still grassy expanse, thinking I could almost make out things moving on the far side of the marsh. I'd always dismiss it. Moose are frequent, and I love to browse the aquatic vegetation here. Yet, there was always a fear, a fear I couldn't rationalize or explain. I didn't know... I didn't know where it came from. When I was young, I attributed it to the fear of bears. After all, there are many cases of hungry grizzlies breaking into cabins and attacking people in their beds. This actually happened to one of our neighbors, a story for another time. I'd like to hear that. Later, my family had put down a problem bear that had been breaking into our garbage shed. With it lying dead before me, I realized that maybe bears weren't behind this unknown terror. This strange, unrational dread went on for many years until I was old enough and big enough to be allowed to go out on my own. I subsided with it, and newfound freedom I had gained. I could go wherever I wished when I wished. I could explore. And I did, as many children do. I trampled around the woods, though I was armed with a big axe, bear spray, and a twenty-two. The area was built on a raised with a steep, wooded slope that ended at the edge of the marsh. These slopes encircling at least half of the marsh before it flattened out to the other side. I typically paraded around on the highlands, never really venturing down the slopes to the marsh. The year 2016 is when it began, or perhaps it had always been, and I was only now truly noticing. There's a big trail that overlooks the marsh. It's where we had long ago pushed old stumps and rotten logs, debris from the trail creation off the side of the slope creating kind of a giant ball of dirt and tangled wood that one could stand on to overlook the marsh. I was speeding by at the time in a four-wheeler and I just happened to look in the direction. There was something there. Something standing in the trail by the debris pile to this day I almost chalk it up to me seeing the largest Sasquatch I've ever seen. But I felt it was not. Nothing. I tried to get it out of my mind. I went by so quick I never really got a good look. It looked like it eh, wasn't really there. Like an, oper like an apparition of some kind. An enormous hunched body suspended. Thin emaciated legs with the long spiny arms reached out to its emaciated legs with long spindly arms. Gray like a dark cloud. It had a big neck and a huge snouted head. There wasn't enough definition to the body, and I was going too fast to see anything else. 
After I'd passed, I stopped and backed up to see what I could catch a glimpse of again. There was nothing. Hmm. So I sat there, and I could not figure out what I had seen. All I could think of was some enormous bipedal moose or wolf. It couldn't have been a bear, as their limbs are pretty thick and stocky not long enough, and they're not emaciated. The fear returned, and this time I felt like I knew where it came from. The next year I sought to conquer my fear, saying to myself I was only seeing things, and if it was an animal, it's only an animal. A friend was staying with me at this time, and then I invited him on a squirrel hunt with me and just to go down and enjoy the bottoms. Where I saw the thing in the adjacent area to prove to myself that there's nothing to fear. With a friend for backup, I regret having drug him into it now, it was pretty scummy of me. Armed with axes, spray, and rifles, we went down the slope the debris pile was on. It was quiet. There were no squirrels chattering in the trees, no chickadees cheeping. Even the ever-persistent mosquitoes lessened and quieted. The only sound was us wading through the bush. Toward the bottom of the debris pile at the marsh's edge, we came across a bone. A femur belonging to something, we didn't look at it or think too much of it. After all, you'll find bones every now and then in the bush. But eventually we found more. A whole moose carcass, picked clean and scattered around the base of the debris pile. Its rib cage was lying directly bleached by the sun, still interconnected by a dried cartilage. We both thought it was interesting stopping to examine the remains. It was old, there was no smell. Perhaps one or two years had passed since its death. As we sat over the bones, we looked behind us and noticed that there was a pile of debris had several tunnels dug through it into the side of the slope. Dense tufts of moose hair littered around. Perhaps a bear had dug a den here? Wisely, we decided to leave, moving horizontal along the slope away from the tunnels. The dread began to seep back to me, but I powered it down, making excuses. Maybe a bear had eaten a moose and hibernated there a long time ago, I thought to myself. But as we progressed, things became uncanny. Along the slope, there were many well-worn trails going alongside it, which we walked to avoid bushwhacking. No discernible tracks could be made, but there were definitely signs of moose. Where they had stripped off leaves and bark to eat, the large patches of flattened grass where something had bedded down. Eventually, we came across another carcass, more intact this time, its bones less scattered. Likely only one winter since it died, its skeletal body was covered in the crunchy shells of the dead insects and maggots, weird, and its neck had been snapped. One of its vertebrates cleanly broken like someone breaking a carrot in half. We thought it strange and we moved on. As we went to begin, we noticed that every so often by the side of the trail there was a young aspen or popular sapling bent over with the log or something holding it down, its top, like the log had been placed there to keep it bent over. We found places where there were multiple saplings bent over in an array of strange patterns, like one after the other in a row. Growing more unnerved, we continued eventually seeing little sticks all laid around the base of a bigger tree, like a tiny teepee. Guys, I have found that. At that point, we hopped out and headed back to the house. We got back inside and we were just taking off our jackets and shoes when it happened. There was a howl or a deep moan or something. I struggled to describe it, but it was so deep and it was so loud I felt it in my chest like it rattled my very lungs. I don't know how to describe it or to put it into words, but the only thing I can even think of is it was like a military air show when the F-15s did the flyovers by the attendees. The jolt. And the air reverberating in your lungs is something you cannot forget. This howl boomed once, and that was it. I felt that whatever it was, it was saying, I know where you have been, and I know where you live. My, bo my buddy and I were shaking, and we were both came to the excuse, did you hear that howl? It had to have been a wolf or something. When we looked at each other, both knowing darn well it wasn't no wolf. After this trek down the slope, there's been things happening. We'll find moose carcasses increasingly close to our house, with most being yearling calves, which are about the size of a horse. 
and we never hear any fight or commotion, so it's assumed that whatever kills them drags the carcass close to our house. But it's got worse. It's ended up throwing the carcasses up on the roof of our house at night, and we'll hear the large thuds. We now hear scratching at our windows and scratching at our doors, sometimes the sound of the doorknob being jiggled as if it's checking to see if we remembered to lock the doors. It pushes on the walls and pushes on the doors, sometimes we think possibly checking to see the sturdiness of our house or how easily it could push a wall down to come inside. My dad has reinforced what he can, and we all stay in at night now with the doors locked, windows pulled, and dad has built even lockers for our windows that we can put up in place to make sure that nothing comes in. Guns are loaded every night and we're all ready to defend our home. I just don't understand why this thing is at our home now. We're not bothering it. Do you have any ideas? Well, a lot of times, that goes back to what I was talking about the other day. If you have an accidental run-in with these things, it seems people have experiences after that. We don't exactly know why they do that, but it seems if it's an accidental or if you're hunting them and you happen to see one, that you will then have problems with them. Uh... I don't know if they imprint on you or if it's something that just happens between you and them or they're keeping an eye on you, but definitely something goes on. Uh, I'm looking into that right now to see, you know, what could pro possibly cause this, and uh, hopefully I'll have better answers for you also. Maybe some of our viewers have some answers, but uh, thank you everyone for listening to this, and until next time, keep your head on a swivel. Don't be something's dinner, and thank you so much for the support for Hunter. It really touches my heart. God bless.